bit of disregard Handful of complaints But I can't help the fact that everyone can see me scarred I am what I want you to want What I want you to feel And it's like no matter what they do I can't convince you to just believe this is real So I let go of watching you Turn your back like you always do Face away and pretend that I'm not I'll be here cause you're all that I got I'm confident, cause you don't understand I do what I can, but sometimes I don't make sense I am. you never wanna say, but I've never had a doubt It's like no matter what I do, I can't convince you for once just to hear me out So I let go of watching you, turn your back like you always do Face away and pretend that I'm not, I'm here home. cause you're all that I got Everybody say You're back on me Um, so my background is, um, I grew up from very humble beginnings, um, uh, put myself through college, graduated with a degree, an undergrad degree in veterinary medicine, total science nerd over here, um, and I was, uh, just kind of having fun in my 20s, I, uh, was a long-term substitute teacher, I moved to New York on a whim, my friend called me to a party, and that's how I met the love of my life. And um, I met Chester, and from the day we met, we were never apart. Um, we were both very um, emotionally unhealthy in our own different ways. And over our time together, we were together for 12 and a half years, um, we both grew. He, ha he struggled with addiction and depression two things that I have never struggled with. Um, although I do have my own demons, I did have you know, my hardships growing up, we just handled them in very different ways. So I, I came from a point of complete, uh, for lack of a better term, ignorance to a situation. Um, but over time, I came to learn that taking care of your mental health is as I said before, as important as taking care um, as your physical health. Um, when Chester died, it was a complete surprise. A complete surprise. I mean, just, um, you know, uh, my husband had had a, um, past, a, a, in the past, he had attempted suicide. But, you know, I thought to myself, oh, it was because he was wasted. He was, you know, this or that. And, you know, so... When he did pass, I thought, not very naively, I thought we were in the clear. We had, had a dear, very dear, dear friend, uh, Chris Cornell, take his own life. And I, and, and, and I felt that, okay, you know, Chester sees, you know, what Vicki and the kids, you know, were godparents to their children, what they're going through, and, and, and this will never happen. So we went on a family trip to our cabin. That's the video that, that, that Jim showed you. My husband was full of life. He had to go back home early to work. He was very excited uh, to uh, be promoting the new album and doing stuff. So he was happy. He gave me a kiss goodbye, gave it, the kids a kiss goodbye, and I never saw him again. Um, the phone call I received that next morning 
was life altering. Um, my children's lives were altered forever. And in the travel time, which felt like a thousand years to get from Sedona back home, I knew that I had to walk into the home where my husband took his life. And I had to normalize that for my children because they were, they were going to respond to how I reacted. Um, I walked into that house and I walked up to the room that it happened in. I made my peace with it and then I made it as normal as I can. And that was the beginning of my journey of doing what I can do to normalize mental health, to normalize it's not always okay. He can't be another rock star gone bad. Tragic, that can't be why. This, his death has to be the tipping point, has to show people we could seem so, so normal, so okay, and then not be okay in an instant. Um, I, I will share with you, um, the, the night my husband took his life, or the early morning, you know, he had been sober for almost six months, which was am amazing for him. He had a lot of shame when he, in the past when he had relapsed. Shame that he had just begun to share with me in the couple months before he died. Shame I didn't even know a person could have. So uh, when, he, when he passed and I learned that, that there were two empty beer bottles in the room, I knew he had relapsed. But I also knew he wasn't so intoxicated, out of his mind, like, it, like I would have thought. I knew instantly that that drink cr triggered that shame, triggered a lifetime of, an, of unhealthy neural pathways. And this is what I want to I want to get through to as many as I can. Talinda Bennington is right about one thing. Chester's death must be the tipping point so we can all become aware of what goes on behind the curtains in Hollywood. As the widow herself admitted, she met the Linkin Park frontman at some party after a friend invited her. Talinda Ann Bentley ventured into modeling and was featured in the college girls section of Playboy magazine. She became a regular fixture in the magazine's spring issues for two years and as it happens with several Playboy models, she was an escort as well. For those unaware of the trade, Escort services and prostitution are often used interchangeably, but there are differences. While escorting is legal in some jurisdictions, if a client pays for sex, then they have committed a crime and most likely violated human trafficking laws. From what we know, in December 2004, Talinda was hired as a party girl by the infamous Dr. Nick. According to the testimonies we showed you, the same night the couple met, the widow slept with Ryan Chuck first and then Chester. The couple started dating right away and Talinda moved into the front man's apartment within a week. As often happens to these celebrities, the Playboy model entered Chester's life during a low point as he had just divorced his first wife, Samantha. Talinda and Chester got married on December 31st, 2005 and she gave birth to their first child three months later. Adding insult to injury, Ryan Chuck was the singer's best man. During the production of this series, another family member decided to speak out. Jamie Bennington is the eldest son of the Linkin Park singer and his ex-girlfriend, Elka Brand. During the last six years, the firstborn had been a strong denier of any theories exploring the murder of his father. As of October 2023, he has changed his stance dramatically and is now fully convinced Chester Bennington was murdered. Pay close attention to the language and the symbolism. Let me introduce myself to you. My name is Jamie Bennington. I'm 27 years old. I am the firstborn son of Chester Bennington and over the last six years, I've gone from a firm supporter of his suicide 
to someone who's absolutely convinced that he did not take his own life and that in, instead he was killed by something or someone for some purpose. And I will be investigating that.